Warning, the following contains graphic content and language some may find offensive. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Well done. In this episode, we embark on a journey that delves into a thought-provoking aspect of the hunting world. Our intention is not to ignite controversy, but rather to initiate a constructive dialogue that underscores the vital role of conservation and the preservation in a thriving of species. It's essential to clarify that our mission revolves around a mature giraffe, aged over 20 years. Our pride stems from the ethical approach we meticulously adhere to throughout this endeavor, driven solely by our commitment to conservation. This video will provide an in-depth look at the entire process, culminating in a conversation with the farm owner, shedding light on the reasons behind our decision to remove this specific individual from the herd. Rest assured, this was not a hasty or impulsive act. The planning and preparation spanned over eight months. Our ultimate aim is for you to grasp the profound significance of conservation and maintaining robust and flourishing populations of these majestic creatures. By doing so, we ensure that future generations, our children, and their children can revel in the wonders of these animals. This video is undeniably centered around hunting, and as such, it includes scenes that may be challenging for the sensitive viewer. If you find such content uncomfortable, we advise you to pause the video at this juncture. However, if you choose to continue, we sincerely appreciate your engagement. Please feel free to comment and engage in free-willed conversation regarding the critical role that conservation plays in preserving our natural world, transcending the contentious debates often associated with hunting ethics and ideals. Hunting is not just about killing, it's about being part of nature, feeling the connection to the land, and experiencing the thrill of the chase. Cameron Haynes. game reserve about a two hour drive from uh from our camp and uh got a kind of a unique opportunity to help out with the problem and manage a manage a herd honest you want to explain a little bit more about that yeah so I, this is close to home for me you know and uh we live close here and tion the owner is my good friend and um you know we we've spoken about you know there's the trees are being killed by these giraffes and there's just too many on the property and uh, it's just too expensive and too difficult to, to, to capture them in this environment. As you can see in the background, it's extremely steep. So um, that's where, where Sean was, came in and you know, he said he'll, he'll take one of these big bulls and uh, harvest him. And uh, yeah, obviously everything of, of this bull will get used. So um, we, just, we just literally spotted the bull. He's in a very difficult spot. So we're gonna wait for them to feed out um, and sort of try and get in front of him there and uh, see if we can get a shot. 
Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a big privilege to, to be able to hunt this area and you know the, the, these giraffe are very populated here yeah, and it's, it's becoming a problem. They're starting to break the fences, they're killing trees so it's important for, for us to, to come in and manage them and just to get someone yeah. like you that's willing to, to pay for an animal like that and meaning that we don't just have to cull them um, is, is an absolute bonus, you know, it's a win-win situation. Well, and for us too, this isn't, we just, just didn't wake up this morning and decide to do this. We've been planning this for, for a long time, for a long time yeah. and have a specific bull in a herd that needs to be taken out, um, really old bull and, you know, just part of part of game management and helping the, helping the owner out at the same time. But it's gonna be, it's a unique opportunity for me. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I think, you know, they're quiet now, they're getting settled, we're gonna, set up and and stalking close make an ethical shot um but but after that we're going to walk you through the whole process of what it's actually like to to take care of one of these animals yeah. when uh, when you get one down it's a it's a big team effort and uh you know you don't get to see it a lot so we're going to go through the whole thing and show you step by step what it's about and uh hopefully we can uh we can get this taken care of pretty quickly because it's going to take a while to get him dealt with absolutely yeah let's go let's do it buddy <laughs> on the right spot otherwise very difficult terrain so um, I think let's move yeah, get there. Let's get there. You just shoot and just squeeze it. Yep. So he's probably going to look forward to his left and then we'll get our shot. Okay. Okay. He's down. Hold well on, Sean. Good shooting. Okay, just keep eyes on him. Yep. He's bleeding well. Um, I think for now, give me the creep move. Yep. Uh, you take the three seven five. It's loaded. It's on safety. It's okay. push forward. You can shoot. Okay, just walk forward. Okay, take the sticks. And then we'll um, allow the skin then flip it over and then skin the other side and cut that leg and shoulder off. And then we'll cut the neck off and then we'll cut the carcass in two and we'll just load it in, 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 in pieces, you know, so. God, yeah. That's awesome. It's just huge. It's fantastic. Like this bull is just huge, to say the least. See, it looks like it's down. <laughs> Congratulations! So hey, Jeez, appreciate it. um, it's a magnificent animal. Do you huh? What a privilege, huh? Beautiful. What a privilege. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So yeah just no. look how dark it is on the brisket there. And you know, right? I could see that mark on the hip. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that that you showed it's, me and. Uh, it actually, it's here. it's coming out. It's there's. Yeah, I don't know if he's got a broken bone or it's a scar yeah. tissue yeah. from fighting or something yeah. in there, but yeah. it's definitely not the same on both yeah. sides. He's pretty easy to spot, but. but they look pretty calm, but Osteon, when they start fighting, it's, oh, it's, it's bad. It's scary. And you it's can scary. hear it. You can stand on there. And yeah. it's, it's well, listen, I really appreciate the opportunity. I mean, this has been on my bucket list for a long time. And, and you couldn't have asked for a better trophy than this. And yeah. I look at the color on yeah. it. It's amazing. Now, everything about it is just incredible. Huh? 
Yes, that's actually that's crazy. Nice. I have to get a bit closer, though. <laughs> I mean, I have to get a lot closer. <laughs> Go have a look. I'll be there. At first, we were unsure about including a specific segment in the video. Nevertheless, following multiple attempts with limited manpower at our disposal, and after consulting with the Arbiter, we recognized the importance of showcasing the extraordinary effort it took to position this remarkable animal, even for something as seemingly trivial as capturing a photograph. All right, well, we got it done, finally. And I'm, uh, I'm just super stoked about this. This has been uh, really a, a bucket list animal for me, but it was important that, uh, you know, everything needed to be right. It needed to be right time, right place. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that we felt good about it and, and that we were doing some good. Yeah. Um, but uh, thanks to a good buddy over there, <laughs> we were uh, the, uh, the stars aligned for us. And here we are today. So, but man, I'm, I'm just super excited. I've kind of, like I said, this has been years we've talked about this now and I had the opportunity to do it together and ethical, you know, very ethical shot. Um, animal went down, didn't feel anything. I mean, that's exactly the way you want it to work out, but I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, this is just a fantastic animal and a fantastic trophy. And it's definitely gonna be something that I'll remember for the rest of my life for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's been an incredible hunt, you know, we. As we said earlier, we're going to try and ambush him, and it just worked out perfectly. We found him in this open spot. You know, and it's, you know, we'll show with the drone. It's quite in a big valley, so we were just very lucky to get him in this area. Um, so the stalk worked out well. Sean did a perfect shot. It was about 110, 120 yards, um, and he went straight down. So a very ethical shot. And you know, a bull of this caliber is it's, it's incredible. You know, this bull is over 20 years old, and uh, just just think about it. Let that sink in. You yeah. know, it's. Um, this bull's been running around here. Yeah, he's probably got a lot of sons and daughters. We call now fill his his uh, his spot, you know. And um, yeah, it's just a perfect one to take out an old bull. His teeth is worn down. He's a nice dark bull, full of fighting marks, full of scars. Um, you know, this was his uh, territory, and just an incredible privilege to to harvest him, you know, and also help Matola with their management. Um, you know, they they've been struggling with trees being killed. And, has been broken with all the bulls and the competition that the giraffes had and uh, yeah I, I just couldn't be happier you know if, if, if hunters do that you know we'll definitely protect these animals for hundreds and hundreds of years so that's why it's so important for people to come here and to hunt these animals because that's true conservation and uh, you know Sean I'm really proud of you this is an incredible bull um, you know he, he'll have a big story oh yeah and uh, he'll have a special place. So um, super well done, good shooting. I'm sure, we'll discuss this over drinks later this evening exactly. and for several years to come. And, uh, and I'm just, uh, I, they're, you're huge. He's okay. huge. I mean, it just, there's there's eight people here behind the camera that you can't see that just to get him in this position, they're just massive. Yeah. Um, you just, you know, you see pictures of other hunters and, you know, obviously you've gone to the zoo and seen him, but until you're standing next to one right here, you just don't realize how big a deal it is. And, Incredible. and, um, no, to take a old bull like this and it's it just, it's super satisfying. I mean, it's, I couldn't ask for anything better. The setup was great and, yeah. and, and special thanks to, to, to Matola for, for letting yeah. us come out and, and do this and giving us the opportunity. And, uh, man, I'm just so grateful. This is bucket life that I'm checked off for sure. So, so Hannes, for you. thanks again, buddy. Absolute pleasure. Making it happen. Absolute pleasure. So nothing of this will go to waste. Dion, for you and your team, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for you know letting us get this opportunity. And um, yeah, the work starts now. Now, nah, yeah, that's, that's the hard part. <laughs> okay, All let's right. go. Let's get to it. Hey guys, well, it's a point in the video where uh, things are about to get real. So if you don't want to see what it's like to process a giraffe, then you may want to fast forward a minute and a half, eh, two minutes to be safe and you'll be good to go.
So cheers, uh, Hans. The um, that was a bucket list thing for me for years and years and years. And thank you very much. So it just worked out perfect in the circumstance. And but was for shooting that, but everything and it's just man, it's surreal. This trip so far has been awesome, man. We're just starting, so I can't wait for more, buddy. Thanks for everybody that helped out and. Well, that's short. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Nice. 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 And hangover. Love that for you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's sweet. That big smell, guys. This is what I've been trying to do. Yes. <laughs> I'll stop <laughs> it. <laughs> stop <laughs> it. <laughs> I did do that. The princess pose. Hey, Sean, what are you doing? Well, I'm enjoying the view right now, taking in some bread and reflecting on what we just did today, which is pretty freaking amazing. Still living your best life? Yeah, yeah, and it's getting better every day. I said, it's just, it's great to be able to share it with people like Oscar and John and Dan and staff and Dakota, you know, people that have not been and that can actually appreciate it. And that's the biggest thing. Everybody in this group actually appreciates it. And they, now I can share with them my love of South Africa and they understand why I keep coming back every year. So I don't really have a list. So we're just going to take it day by day and whatever presents itself, we're going to take it. My pH, I learned a long time ago, if my pH says, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I don't even ask it, just send it. Exactly, how it should be. I don't know. If you're coming, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to tell Oscar. Even if it's not on your list or maybe you've exceeded what your budget was, it's cheaper to go ahead and bite the bullet and shoot it now than it is to book a whole other trip back and come back and try to get on it. Because that animal that's fantastic that your pH has got you on may not be there next time. So you listen to him. True story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome, guys. We are here at Matola Private Game Reserve in Stadram area, Stadram Kumka area. Um, on the right hand, we've got Sean here, who shot the beautiful giraffe bull. And um, we've got Kion here, the landowner. And uh, yeah, so Kion, uh, I, I think you should maybe just start and just give us a little bit of background on your management and, you know, the giraffe and how many you guys have and sort of where you stand on that. So. Wonderful, yeah. Congratulations on a beautiful animal. Thank so, you, sir. Well, shot, and I mean, Hannes did a great job at pointing it out to you as well. So yeah, uh, first of all, we have to go back that the hunter at the end of the day is the conservationist. If it's not for the hunter, we would not be able to have the giraffe, all the beautiful animals that we do have, the money and everything else being spent on that genes, quality, genetics, it's just all up to that. Um, so our thing with the giraffe that we've got over here is overpopulation. We came out of a terrible seven year drought. And in that time, Lots of our thorn trees, acacia trees, died off with the giraffe, just taking off the top of the tree and dying from the, bot from the top down. So in that time, also a lot of mating took place. This property has been a game farm now for the past 20 years. This giraffe that we shot today was probably one of the very first giraffe introduced onto the property. So that gives you an idea of a giraffe being pregnant. I think it's for 12, 13 months. Over a year. So um, if you take that into account, he's basically almost started inbreeding again with all of that. So that's one of the best things that we could have done is take him out of the gene pool because he's a dominant male. You've seen him just for his peers to also come through, come yeah, through yeah. step up. So, so basically you were scared of him mating his daughters that's and you get inbreeding on your it. property. Wonderful. No, that's exactly yeah. what we were yeah. doing. And that's you get the thing. And that's it. Okay. And that's where you start losing again, coming up with your white giraffe instead of your dark, beautiful giraffe that you yeah. got and the smaller lower jaw and all of that. And also another thing is on the drought, when we had this drought, feed, food, it was a big thing. Them going through fences, going into neighbors' farms and them being cattle farmers, it was a very big problem at the end of the day that we had. So, and managing that part of it was tricky, tricky to say yeah. the least. And so that's why we're very, very grateful for people like Sean having this dream and coming to accomplish it and taking off a mature animal that's been here for so many years. So thank you very much yeah. for that. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's the, like I said, that's the goal behind it. We want to want to take mature animals and 
And that's and that's part of conservation and, and the dollars that that we as Americans come over and spend here. It goes right back in. You know, there's a lot of people stateside that don't see it that way, but they've never been here. So it's it's easy to throw stones at a glass house when you don't actually live in that glass house. Right. So, you know, that, that's the other side of it. People need to understand, you know, and, and part of conservation is these animals have a value. Exactly. And, and we need to harvest the animals to generate income to put back into the farms and the property. And, and realistically, it keeps the prices down to where people can afford to come and hunt. You know, if, if these hunters aren't here, you know, doing this, then prices get out of hand or, you know, you cut down all the fences and you start grazing cattle and sheep again because it's not profitable and, and that we get. I mean, and you shot a monster to that. I mean, I did. eight people. Yep. Think about the eight people, all their families. Eight people, oh and yeah. Everything like that. So just think about the ripple effect that's yeah. got. It's absolutely amazing to do things like that. Well, you, you touch, you don't touch one family, you touch dozens and dozens and dozens all the way down through the line. Yes, you know, it, it, from from the farm owner to the cooks to the wait staff, to all, you know, all the staff that's here and so on and so forth. So it, it really is a trickle down effect here in South Africa. And, and it's good to see, you know, that, that money's going to, to good use. Plus, you know, we, frankly, we have fun doing it. You know, it's a blast. And that's what it's yeah, about. No, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, we're 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 out we're out here on holiday, you know, and you know, back in the states, you know, I get to come. Fortunately, I get to come about once a year, so I'm yeah. one of those guys that that just are really living a fairly decent life right now. But uh, <laughs> but no, it's just I mean, the fact that you have them here and that you you keep them and not just those animals, but but all the other ones, and you guys take care of them year round, and you know, it's just it's fantastic what you do and how how preserved this place is and facilities are fantastic so stop, stop. oh my god yeah. <laughs> the food uh, lunch lunch was pretty good dessert wasn't bad either and i'm not ta uh, talking about the, uh, the second dessert the, the, uh, second. the second dessert yeah that, we, that, we. that was yeah that that was pretty impressive um no but the facility here is fantastic and and you the hospitality has been phenomenal and and we get that you know um here it's been exceptional this trip has been exceptional exceptional but you know most of south africa is that way and 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 we we encourage people to come you know we, we you know i've got a bunch of newbies that have never been before and they're just oh my yeah yeah oh it's freaking awesome i can't <laughs> wait to come back and you know we, we we've got uh, my business partner john with us that swore you know I, I took him a few years ago and he's like before the trip he's like yeah i'm gonna go once this is gonna be my coup de gras trip and i'm done i'm never going back <laughs> two years later he's right back here again lost <laughs> just yeah and, and stacking shit up too just yeah. like cordwood he d just and just can't get enough of it and that's you know, that, that's the beauty for me to be able to share my exper past experiences with these guys and, and get them involved in too. So the more people that, you know, that I can get coming to South Africa, the better it is for everybody. Exactly. You know, and we call it the conservation dollar. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, not the petrodollar, it's the conservation <laughs> the dollar. Conser right. And, and, and it's, a, it's an important part. So another thing I wanted to touch on is just, um, you know, capturing these animals on your property. I, I know you, you said something in this real Yes, yeah. No, so a few years back in this drought that we had, we tried catching off. So they did catch eventually seven of them and sell them again. So first of all, just you've seen the terrain that we're in here. Darting them, catching them, flying with helicopter. It is expensive. expensive. It's, you're not making anything out of it. And I do understand that you're trying to split it up and for the greater cause at the end of the day. But we all need to survive at the end of the day sure. as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that wasn't very, for us on our side, I don't think it's something that we would go into again after seeing. We, we tried it, we tested, not for us. Yeah, yeah, so maybe like just harvesting an old bull like that is the, probably the best humane way of, mm, that's it. of just uh, managing your property. And, no and, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. we, we're looking at, I don't know, acres wise, what we got here, but um, yeah, 40 plus giraffe on the property, so it's, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, and we, and, and we, we picked through a bunch of giraffe this morning before we finally found that one. And, you know, that little bump on his hip there kind of gave him away. Oh, that's, that's the it. one which was unique to, I mean, as soon as we saw that, oh, that's definitely the one from the picture that you'd sent earlier. So, yeah, it was, no, and it was fun. It was a fun hunt. And I, you know, from a personal perspective, we talked about this earlier, Hannes and I have killed dozens and dozens of, you know, animals and been on hunts. And I, I never get nervous during a hunt. This one, I, maybe because I've just wanted to do it for so long, yeah. I was like, my heart was beating out of my chest. I, I literally had to get off the gun, <laughs> deep breath, That's calm it. myself. And it wasn't a long shot or anything difficult. And it's 110 yards, something like that. But it just, I think I've wanted to do this for so long that it was just kind of in there. And I was trying to play it off and be cool, but I, I had to step away from the gun for a second, kind of collect myself That's and it. get settled back in. And But we listen, at the end of the day, we made an ethical shot. The animal didn't feel it, went straight down. And, and that's what's important. And, uh, you know, um, I just, I'm so thankful 
given the opportunity. I mean, I feel but, blessed. Sorry, just going back to that, if you don't have that passion, that drive that you're talking about now, it would have never happened. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you need to, and that's something that we just pass on. It's not in everybody, and a hunter stays a hunter. Yeah. That's what it's. Well, and, and, and in, in retrospect, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to hunt draft before. It's never been the right opportunity that's though. It. And this felt, that, I mean, you know, with you two, you know, like your neighbors and friends and everything else. And, you know, I've, I've known Hannes for for years now and I've known you through Hannes from years now. And now we finally get to meet and I get to come out on your farm and it just, it's fantastic. We're listening to country music and 80s music back there. I'm like, where in the hell did they find this guy? This guy is awesome. The hiding me right, Jeff. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, right there. And I've driven by your gate, I don't know, a half dozen times yeah. with Hannes before and just never come in, so. Now you're not allowed to pass here again. No, 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 never, you know never I again. I have to stop, I'm going to be very angry. Yeah, and I texted somebody the gate code, so I even have that. So I just get a knock on your door one day. Ah, I just decided to take a trip to South Africa. And that's the nice thing, the hospitality, like you mentioned, there's always going to be an open yep. door for you. Yep. No, we, we certainly appreciate that. But, but yeah, so so what's next, Honest? Where do we go from here, buddy? Well, we are here, so I think we'll go sit above the river, have a look down, and maybe we'll see Nyan or Big Warthog or something. So maybe, a, well. maybe a sundowner? Let's do that. I th maybe a sundowner, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's I like the yeah. way you yeah. think. Yeah. I, I think a sundowner. I mean, it's sundown somewhere. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere also too so well boys exactly. well, listen it was a pleasure wonderful thank you thank you honest again honest. Thank i'm so you. proud Thanks, to be associated with you guys and you know to be part of this hunt was something incredible you know and uh i think it's uh it's 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 a big part of conservation and if we can keep on doing this we'll make sure that your kids my kids and your kids and grandkids will still see these animals so well done guys no, yeah thanks yeah, yeah. cheers I agree. yeah love it's it sun down all right That's ready it. let's go <laughs> let's go This afternoon, Hannes and I hatched a little plan that we fortunately were able to keep to ourselves. We convinced my buddy Oscar that I was on the hunt for a magnificent Inyala bull, and he was there as an observer, but that wasn't actually factual. So let's rewind a bit. As we ventured into this enchanting Matola private cam reserve this morning, we were greeted by an incredible sight, a sprawling herd of impala, blessbuck, and zebras stretching as far as the eye could see. Oscar's eyes widened with wonder as he laid eyes on a majestic white blessbuck for the very first time and he couldn't help but express how utterly beautiful they are. That simple moment of awe was all it took for Hannes and me to secretly flip the script and concoct a plan. Our mission this afternoon, to get Oscar up close and personal with one of the most impressive white blessed bucks we've ever laid eyes on. Back leg. Yeah. Oh, I just shot a white blast bug. How did that happen? Thanks for the dial. Uh, that was a team effort right there, wasn't it, boys? Oh, oh yeah. Man. Crazy wind. It's awesome. a wind hole. That was awesome, right? <laughs> that was awesome. Well but, done, gents. But, well but, done. Uh, the wind is. We uh, spent the day here at the Toad Duck Island Game Reserve, close to Coopers, and we got Oscar and this beautiful white leaf bug. We were lying on them for quite a while, you know, just looking at them and uh, to eventually get a shot. But it's good shooting, you know, Oscar, we've uh, pushed the limits on you. Oh, yeah. I think we've doubled what you, what 
you shot your first animal on. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. You don't always get close to these ones. They're quite weary, you know. Yeah. They, they've got good outside. They're living being hurt, so it's difficult to get close to them. I think you really did well. This is an exceptional animal, and um, yeah, just well done. Uh, the longer shot, now this is almost double that. Oh, yeah. they're just, just awesome, awesome hunt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well done. You deserve this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. If you're gearing up for an unforgettable safari experience in the Eastern Cape and you want to immortalize your hunt on film, look no further than my good friend Quibus. Quibus is not only a skilled videographer, he's also a licensed professional hunter, offering you the best of both worlds. With him, you'll capture the moments without compromising the hunt. You can find Quibus's contact details in the description below and don't hesitate to reach out to him to discuss how he can help you capture your next safari adventure. Your continued support means the world to us. If you've enjoyed our content, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell. This small gesture goes a long way in helping us grow the channel and explore more exciting facets of the great outdoors.